And that's the end of the first half. We'll be back with NFL 85 after these messages from your local station. From another planet. Come here, quick! Oh, yes, Amazing. Premiering tonight from executive producer Steven Spielberg. Amazing stories. The General XP 2008. It performed. It performed in Europe. It performed like a winner. On the test track. And the Autobahn. And it moved. XP 2000H, the high-performance radial tire from General. And it moves like a champion. The General XP 2000H. For Tom Casey, whose gasoline chickened out every time he tried to pass. Now, as always, there's the gas with guts with its extra octane to help you accelerate, climb, and pass without laying an egg. For Phil Balshi, whose mechanic couldn't figure out which end was up, certified car care mechanics can keep up with any problem. Go! Everything we do makes driving better for you. James Dean, Monday on Entertainment Tonight. This is a New Center 7 halftime news update. Hello, I'm Stephanie Stahl. And I'm Rick Sanchez. Welcome to our halftime report. Controversy at the new Broward Jail being rekindled tonight with the first inmate death at that facility. This morning's discovery comes on the heels of allegations made by two nurses that the jail has inadequate health care. Those nurses were subsequently fired after they complained. The medical examiner's office says the 38-year-old female inmate died of asthma early this morning. She was booked into the county jail Friday on petty theft charges. The deputies had been monitoring her since she was brought to the jail facility on the 27th. They were checking her almost every half hour. But the inmate was apparently not being checked every half hour, since the Broward Sheriff's Office now says that one hour and ten minutes passed between the time she was last seen alive and the discovery of her body. State Senator John Hill, chairman of the Corrections Committee, says he's going to investigate health care at the Broward Jail. We're told the typical weekend staff consists of three nurses and one doctor for 700 inmates. The Florida Department of Professional Regulation says the doctors who operated on photographer Bob East did not violate the state's malpractice law. East was accidentally injected with a fatal substance during surgery to remove cancer from his face. The report has no effect on the civil lawsuits pending against the doctors and Jackson Memorial Hospital. Tonight, the book remaining open on the pillowcase rapist. Police saying the ex-cop who says he did it did not, in fact, do it. Pedro Gonzalez confessing he raped upwards of 40 women, tying them up and blindfolding them with pillowcases. But detectives now say blood tests prove Gonzalez is not the attacker. The former Miami police officer was arrested last week for the murder of Nilda Martinez. That charge will not be dropped. And tonight, that former Hialeah police officer accused of murder getting some help from character witnesses. Carlos Simón's friends and relatives telling the court he is a peace-loving man, incapable of murder. But Simón's partner says the officer did kill the former owner of Faces in the Grove and his girlfriend during a robbery back in February. The case is expected to go to the jury by week's end. It is a doubly grand day for the Isla Morada teenager needing a life-saving heart-lung transplant. Billy Bostic is 15 years old today and is celebrating the birthday in grand style. A big bash going on in the Keys right now and News Center 7 is there. Later tonight, he's flying to Johns Hopkins Hospital to await the surgery. Billy's life-saving dream came true when a Saudi Arabian prince donated a quarter of a million dollars for the operation. A musical fundraiser for Mexican earthquake victims, and tonight Miami is part of the 12-hour nationwide telethon. Famous Hispanic singers from 17 countries are joining forces for the cause. Miami's hottest Hispanic entertainers are singing the night away at Our Lady of Charity Church, that's near Mercy Hospital. All proceeds going to Mexican earthquake relief. Stephanie, meanwhile tonight, the State Department confirming 10 Americans died in that Mexican disaster. And officials also say all 24 missing Americans so far are likely to be dead as well, buried and collapsed in hotels and underneath buildings. Tonight, 11 people now believed killed as a result of Hurricane Gloria as well. Meanwhile, all along the northeast coast, the cleanup continues. And tonight, almost a million people are still in the dark. Electricity knocked out by the storm.
too early to tally up Georgia's damage, but it's believed to be over $50 million. And Don Franklin joining us now with a look at our weather. Denver's worried about the winter, and what do we have but a tropical wave right now? Ooh. <laughs> in fact, it's keeping our temperatures very delightful at the moment, 82 degrees uh, in Miami and along the beach, 84 in Kendall, 81 in Fort Lauderdale, Key West, 86. And our winds are from the east at 16, a little bit breezy. Barometer 3003 and steady, relative humidity 72%, surf temperature is 83 degrees. That same little tropical wave has brought us some showers today. You can see them down on the strait, scattered around the land areas and off in the Gulf. They're all moving generally in a westerly direction at about 10 miles an hour. On the satellite picture, you can get a pretty good idea of uh, what we have going on as far as cloud cover is concerned. You can see that most of the snow now has moved past Denver, and down here in the southeastern uh, quadrant of the country, we have that tropical wave to contend with, and that will be bringing us a few showers. Our forecast is going to call for partly cloudy skies tonight. We'll be looking for temperatures somewhere in the mid-70s. Things will be looking pretty good as far as that's concerned. We very probably will hold up with the same shower activity that we have been having, as you can see on radar. Uh, after our partly cloudies tonight, uh, the rainfall will begin to diminish a little bit, and tomorrow and Tuesday looks a little bit better all the way around. And the winds will be dropping, although small craft caution is still up. Okay. okay. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Finally, how about spreading the wealth? Well, that's just what a woman we told you about last night is doing today. Deborah Benedict says she'll sell the gold and spread the rest of her fortune around to those who really need it. Benedict was the winner of an eight-day treasure hunt conducted by none other than Mel Fisher. Benedict says she'll share her $60,000 prize with either a home for the elderly or one for the mentally handicapped or both. I would assume there's enough money there to go around for both of them. That's for sure. And that is our abbreviated report. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back at 11 with all the latest news, weather, and sports. I'm Stephanie Stahl. And I'm Rick Sanchez. For Don and the entire News Center 7 team, you're going to be going back to Denver shortly. See you at 11. Back in snowy Denver, Colorado, six inches to a foot, even more than that in some parts of Colorado yesterday and last night. The field protected in excellent condition, but the temperature is dropping here in what uh, some of the locals call the real Orange Bowl. It's uh, Orange Day, the Bronco Orange very much in display at the intermission. The Dolphins lead the Broncos 20 to 17. Back with NFL 85 after these words from your local station.